Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited to be here to talk about patient-centric pharmacovigilance and building better outcomes through integrated technology. And I think the stress here is on the outcomes. We spend a tremendous amount of time in quintiles in life cycle safety, helping our customers find appropriate outcomes, particularly on the operational and clinical levels. So with that, let's take a look at the agenda. So during today's talk, Brian and I are going to try to address the, fo the following five areas. First of all, we want to talk about the pharmacovigilance and the pressure it's under currently to set the scene, scene of what's happening to cause the changes that we're all experiencing. Then we want to talk about our vision and really some of the other thought leaders within pharmacovigilance. What is the vision for pharmacovigilance, the science, long term? And then talk specifically about key components for the future. And I know many of you think about these, the people, the process, and the technology. And we want to spend a few minutes about talking around how you harness those three legs of the stool to be really effective. Lastly, we're going to focus on um, creating an integrated patient-centric model making sure that we have a proactive, automated approach for better outcomes. And finally, we want to make sure we have plenty of time for Q&A so that we can talk about the various issues that we're all facing. Next slide. So with that, as we were thinking about this talk, I really wanted to step back and think about pharmacovigilance and where it came from. Myself, like all of you, have probably been involved in the science for quite some time, and it's really changed tremendously. At one time, really, it was very passive. It was all about gathering adverse events that came to us through lots of mechanisms, whether mail, um, email, phone calls, et cetera, and putting them into some sort of database, then aggregating that data, and then reporting it out to regulators or concerned parties. And that pretty much was the scope of pharmacovigilance. And then some things started to happen. And there were these environmental factors that really started to drive the need for change. And probably one of the ones that I think about that drove this were these think tanks that were established with ICH and SIOM, where they started to talk about the preferred state of pharmacovigilance and some of the expectations around aggregate reporting, case processing, signal detection, et cetera. Also, in recent years, we've really seen the regulators get very involved around increasing requirements and expectations and really enacting legislation that forces the MAH or the marketing authorization holders to really change the way they do pharmacovigilance. And that specifically, if I think about all the changes I've seen globally, probably the biggest one had to do with the GVP or the, the good pharmacovigilance practices requirements that came out in 2010. That really changed the scene. And since that time, what you're seeing is the globalization and other emerging markets are also jumping on the bandwagon now, requiring more and more regulatory oversight and active um, pharmacovigilance. As a matter of fact, I just this week read an article about what was happening in China with the CFDA and how they're requiring more and more pharmacovigilance and active signal detection. Also, we're seeing that there is much more complexity with partnerships. Companies are now actively having numerous SDEAs or safety data exchange agreements with lots of partners, marketing, marketing um, partners, et cetera, around the globe in excess of sometimes of hundreds of these SDEAs. And they're all unique, and oftentimes they're not harmonized. And the expectation then for pharmacovigilance to deliver on those is rather extensive. Also, one of the things that's really happened to change is the increasing um, public awareness and expectations with the advent of the Internet Patients now really are an active participant in pharmacovigilance and overall drug safety. And as a matter of fact, what's really revolutionary is patients are now being invited to the table to actually make decisions about regulations and about um, benefit risk management. As a matter of fact, for those of you familiar with the EU, there's actually a patient that sits on the PRAC that provides input in risk assessments for products. Also something that was just in the press last month in September is that the EU has actually initiated a pilot where patients are actually being invited to discuss and provide input into benefit risk management, benefit risk evaluation for products. And this one was specific to erythropoietin product. So really, this is just the beginning of this, but patients are demanding more input into the drug safety of their products. And we, as manufacturers, really need to step back and also be responsive to their needs. So what we've really seen is PV go from a passive science with all these external pressures now coming on board, both at the regulatory and the market level, and that's changing what we need to deliver. So 
most what's happening is our customers are really challenged with looking at the maintenance of those products, the increased costs and expectations for delivery. And so therefore, moving that, if we move to the next slide, we really want to explore this further, this complexity. And when I think of the complexity, there's really three areas. First of all is the internal pressures. And for those of you like myself who run a PV organization, there are tremendous internal pressures. You've got to constantly be more efficient, drive more value, be more productive with your staff. You've got to reduce costs. You need to help our customers speed their product approvals. And most importantly is optimize those product assets. You know, customers and companies are constantly reevaluating their strategies to address the decreasing product margins with a goal really to maintain their quality and safety profiles of their products. You layer the internal pressures with the external pressures, which is really this increasing demand for safety data and product knowledge. You know, there have been some high product profiles that we've all read about, such as Vioxx, which really was the impetus for greater scrutiny. We've also been asked to now collect more relevant data from sources across life cycle. And that's not only just the clinical trial data and the, and the post-market adverse events that come to us, but also to actively search the literature. And, and those of you who've actually gone through inspections will have probably heard from inspectors, they want to actually look at your literature search strategies to make sure that you're actively trolling the literature space to make sure you understand what's being um, discussed about your product safety profile. And probably one of the most um, controversial subjects is what do we do with social media and all the information out there that patients are talking about their products and their experiences and what do we do with that? 